Okay, so uh, you are back in Windsor. Does that mean you think that this could be a battleground area and that Liberals have a chance to get some seats? I think the reality is that 35 seats across the country, every region uh, where we don't have seats is going to be a battleground area. We're committed to forming a, a truly national government with strong voices from every corner of the country. And uh, uh, that's why I'm spending so much time traveling across the country, meeting with uh, not just citizens, but uh, industry leaders, business leaders, uh, mayors, municipalities, provincial, uh, provincial leaders to talk about both the challenges and the opportunities facing uh, the region and our entire country. What would you say is the main policy initiative coming out of the uh, London caucus? Oh, I think uh, an understanding of how important manufacturing uh, continues to be as a as a piece of of, uh, uh, of a diverse and robust Canadian economy. Uh, the fact is, we have a prime minister who's, as I've said, put all his eggs in one basket. Uh, was counting on high oil prices to uh, uh, to balance his budget, and now uh, the oil prices are plummeting, and he's totally at a loss. He's improvising. He's uh, delayed the budget. He's canceling uh, important meetings that you'd think uh, a meeting with our, our neighbors uh, in, in Ottawa would be a good thing to talk about the economy, but he has no idea what to do, and uh, that's not the leadership the Canadians need. I, I think I saw a couple of days ago you said that you felt southwestern Ontario should uh, expand beyond auto manufacturing. Could you talk to me a little bit oh, about that? Oh, I think manufacturing will always be an important part and there's such expertise and resilience here. Uh, but we have to understand that a diverse economy is essential and uh, moving into into a, a huge range of things uh, is going to, going to be helpful. But there will always be an important core in manufacturing uh, in Canada that, uh, that will be centered uh, very much in southwestern Ontario. Do you think we should have an auto strategy? or? An I think uh, any strategy uh, that by the federal government needs to focus on uh, investing in uh, education and training that's going to draw in uh, you know, plants and, and corporations who uh, want to set up where there's a strong and willing workforce with the qualities to do great work, quality work. Uh, that is, uh, there's a, an infrastructure investment that's going to make sure that we can get our goods to market and make sure we get our people to work, make sure that, uh, that there is a reliable uh, uh, way of, of uh, reaching out to customers uh, across the country, across the continent, around the world, uh, and also is going to uh, support the kind of uh, innovation and research that is needed uh, if we're, any plant is going to continue to be competitive. So uh, yes, the auto industry is important to not just this region, but this whole country, and will continue to be. We have a couple of places talking about uh, expanding who are beginning uh, medical marijuana grow operations. What do you think about that? What do you think about medical marijuana? I think uh, the current approach on marijuana by this government is a total failure. The, the prohibition uh, is both leaving uh, our young people uh, more uh, exposed to marijuana than any other country. Of 29 different developed countries, according to a UN study, Canada has the number one use of underage marijuana, uh, use by underage citizens of marijuana. And that means uh, Young people, in real terms, find it easier to buy a joint than buy a beer, uh, and that's wrong. And that's why we need to control and regulate uh, so that we're protecting our, our young people. It also means uh, we have to prevent uh, the tens of millions of dollars that goes every year into uh, the pockets of organized crime and, and street gangs, because uh, that's uh, you know, funding criminality. Uh, at the same time preventing a, a revenue stream that would be significant for Canadians. So I think uh, legalizing, uh, regulating, uh, allowing for uh, um, access by uh, responsible adults uh, for, uh, for medical or recreational use uh, is something that Canada should be doing because other jurisdictions have shown that it works. You might not know about this one, but there is a federal building here called the Paul Martin Building, which has fallen into disrepair. The federal government has not put in the money to uh, keep it up. What do you think about that? Honestly, I think the uh, partisanship of this government is is uh, uh, hurting them in, in in silly ways. I mean, I think uh, what uh, what a a uh, liberal government would go out of its way to restore a Diefenbaker building, for example, just to show uh, that we're reaching out across party lines. But uh, these guys can't help themselves but be uh, overly partisan. I think it's a part of uh, not just uh, Windsor's uh, uh, you know, civic and cultural history, that building, but uh, an important part of our, our political history to, uh, to recognize the incredible contributions of Paul Martin Sr. and uh, make sure that uh, you know, 
the uh, federal buildings like that are properly upkept. You would put the money into it? I put the money into it, yes. Uh, speaking of uh, political legacy, how much do you think your father would have helped you with this run for prime minister, and what do you think he might have given you as advice? Oh, I think, first of all, he's, he's already helped me immensely, understanding that uh, what's important in politics is trusting Canadians and staying true to your values, uh, and to stay connected and to earn people's trust by working incredibly hard. Uh, that, those are the lessons he gave me uh, as I grew up. I, I grew up around a, a kitchen table with him from the age of 13 onwards when he had left politics, uh, where we debated uh, everything large and small and we challenged each other in all sorts of different ways so he he made me the man I am today as did my extraordinary mother as you know uh, but uh, the fact is Politics today is uh, done in a very different way than it was uh, years ago. The, uh, the, the kind of outreach, the kind of uh, people connection that uh, I love so much, uh, my father wasn't naturally as good at. He was much more of, a, uh, of, a, of an intellectual, uh, he, he got along well with people, uh, but he wasn't a people person the way, uh, the way uh, my mom has allowed me to be. Uh, and, and I think he, I mean, I, I miss him every day and I'd love for him to be on my side. Uh, but uh, but he, he still is in many ways. Well, speaking about knowing people, then what would you say the average Canadian would be most surprised to learn about you if they hung around with you a bit? Um, I think, and, and I've seen this an awful lot, people have a certain uh, expectations around me, whether it's because of you know the way I was brought up or, or some of the great chances I've had in life, and uh, the fact that I'm 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 not uh, particularly uh, distant or aloof, that I actually enjoy meeting with people, and I'm uh, I, I'm not uh, someone who puts uh, who makes people feel uncomfortable. I, I, for me, uh, I really like hanging out with people, and I like sitting down and having a beer at the end of the day with them, and uh, that. Uh, that's something that I, that I don't get it, but it seems to surprise a lot of people. If you could get into a boxing ring with one person, who would that be? Ah, uh, you know, I I already <laughs> did that, and it's and it's done pretty well. Once I've crossed something off my bucket list, I don't need to do it again. Uh, my next big fight, obviously, will be metaphorical uh, against uh, against a prime minister, and I'm uh, very confident that uh, that Canadians are responding uh, to the hard work I'm putting in. Uh, Frank Schiller has uh, not lived in Windsor for 20 years. He's running for the nomination. How do you feel about that? I think uh, one of the big uh, big important things is that uh, uh, local Liberals get to choose who their representative is going to be and that's why I'm a huge believer in open nominations and I'm excited about the kind of people who've uh, gathered together across the country and stepped up and said, yeah, I want to run for politics because bringing together an extraordinary team is not just about uh, making sure that, that the Liberal Party has a great slate of candidates that people can see, oh yes, they'd make a great government. It's also about reminding people that politics is supposed to draw in extraordinary people, the best and the brightest, strong voices for their communities, rather than just the Prime Minister's voice in their communities. Uh, so I'm going to trust local Liberals to make, uh, make the right choice uh, uh, when that nomination comes around. Please finish the, uh, the following sentence. If elected, my first full day as Prime mm -hmm. Minister, I would... And uh, spend the day probably uh, reaching out to uh, premiers and uh, and uh, and uh, municipal leaders uh, uh, to build the kinds of relationships that are going to be essential going forward. Uh, I think. Uh, a uh, collaborative, cooperative leadership uh, is what people expect in the 21st century. They don't expect uh, nastiness and partisan attacks. Uh, and uh, I will spend the day uh, reaching out to other levels of government and other leaders uh, to build a foundation to solve the big problems uh, in the coming, uh, coming days, weeks, and years. And Great. And what, finally, what's next for you? Uh, next, I'm uh, off to uh, the GTA uh, this evening uh, to do some more meetings, uh, and then I'm, I get to be home this weekend, and I'm looking forward to that. Great. Is there anything else I should know? Uh, just uh, what a pleasure it is to be back in Windsor. Thanks a lot for uh, talking with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay.